Hey guys, Max here again, and today I'm with Grant, who just gloriously choked out a man in a ring in deep. Squeeze! Squeeze! Yay! And I was there. Uh, I have proof. There's a picture. Uh, thanks for letting me do that, man. It was super awesome to be a part of. Legit, like, so Deep, can you give a little bit of backstory? Deep is like right under Pride and all these other MMA organizations in Japan, right? Yeah, Deep is the direct descendant of Pride, which uh, back in the day was bigger than the UFC. So right now, it's a medium-sized league here in Japan, um, maybe one step under the UFC. But uh, Grant actually made his way to Japan as an ALT in JET, which many people know what JET is. Many people come to Japan with no other option other than to teach English. But Grant broke out of it. You don't teach English any, well, do you, <laughs> do you teach some English? Um, actually, starting July 1st, which is today, mm. I am officially teaching zero English. Hey, <laughs> 2021, baby. <laughs> new new goals. So you started teaching, though. Uh, you, you became a JET ALT, right? Um, 2016? That would have been July 23rd, 2016. So exactly five years yeah. to break free. So we want to kind of, you know, we talked about it a little bit. You know, it's pretty amazing that he can do MMA now and gym and stuff like that as he's living in Japan. But I think this might help some people who are trying to be a JET ALT right now or maybe in the middle of the process of being an ALT. If you already finished, I don't know if this is going to help you, but hopefully this can give you a little bit of insight of maybe things to expect on the JET program and what to kind of do to break free. Right before we start though, I did want to just at least show a little bit of Grant's fight. Uh, let's watch this thing. Man. All right. How long did you train for this fight? I've been training for this fight my whole life. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah I know. That. I realized that was kind of a dumb question. Because <laughs> no. um, you've been doing judo and BJJ like a long time. Yeah, but um, I started to do like MMA daily for this fight, uh, maybe three weeks out. But before that, I've been doing BJJ and grappling and stuff. Let me just stop you. Let me remind you, this is a JET ALT. <laughs> yes, in former. In a past life. Former. Former. Yeah. former. I did the JET program for two years. We come in all shapes and sizes. <laughs> and colors. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is this is it though. Yeah. I mean, this is honestly... I, I showed my mom this fight. <laughs> and she was like, oh, why would he do that? It's so mean. <laughs> and I was like, actually, I think this is the nicest way that the fight could have ended. Yeah, so the alternative would have been to maybe like take him down and beat the crap out of him on the ground, right, yeah. open him up, you know, he'd leave the ring like bloody and, and with brain damage and, um, and get paid like $200. <laughs> Neither of us were getting paid enough to take serious damage, so that's why I had the ability to finish it without punching him so much, so I took it. Grant's a nice guy. He le he's learned a lot from teaching people, I guess. And because he, he does also teach BJJ now, um, hopefully you can teach more and more people can join. Uh, but let's get straight into the JET program now and ALT life, English teaching in general. How did Grant get out of it? Let's start with your expectations and going into the JET program. You know, you're half Japanese, so I'm sure Japan was like always on your list. But what did you, what was the process of applying? So I went to University of Iowa, and the head of the Japanese department there was a former JET, and uh, kind of framed it to like everyone in the department that the JET program is the end-all be-all. And, and there's other ways to get there, but they're not so good. And so I was thinking in my mind, like, man, the JET, this is the number one thing I got to do. And even if I got to throw away my, my Japanese passport, I got to do it which was like the biggest regret of my life. The thing um, is, I, I know other half people who do it and don't throw away their Japanese passport. Like, yeah, spoiler alert, no dual citizen for Grant anymore. Yeah, if you are a half Japanese person and you have a Japanese citizenship, just check the no box on the application. Nobody will check. You can save yourself a long and painful trip to the consulate and uh, keep a citizenship. Because after I got out of the JET program, my, my thought process was, okay, I don't need this Japanese passport. I'm going to come do JET for two years, then peace out back to America. I decided to stay in Japan. I get out of the JET program. I'm facing discrimination uh, 
finding apartments, getting jobs, everything because I don't have a Japanese passport. So if you have one, like, don't get rid of it. Be like Max. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, yeah, yeah. Be like somebody. You applied. This guy basically sold the JET program as being one of the best ways to get to Japan. Um, and you got accepted. Was it pretty hard to get accepted? So, um... If you meet a certain number of requirements, it's actually extraordinarily easy to get in. Um, but you can't like just rush it and fix it. If you're in your third year of college and you want to get in the JET program, but you got like a 2.0 your first year, that's really going to affect you. Uh, if you have a near perfect GPA, that's like almost a free pass. Um, if you are a ethnic minority, like specifically not a white male or a sexual minority like somewhere on the LGBT spectrum like they will bring you in because they're trying to promote diversity um, wait so if you are G LGBT or not LGBT if you're a straight white male your chances of getting into the jet program are actually lower than Interesting. so in company like company English they want straight white males blonde hair and blue eyes uh, to sell to the moms of the kids right but at a public school, you don't have to sell anything. It's not about making sales. It's just about teaching and uh, cultural exchange. So they want to promote, like, people who are different, you know. And if you're, like, a straight white male, you should write in your essay that, like, you've struggled with um, being in the closet your whole life or something. It'll probably be a free <laughs> ticket in. <laughs> is, is that what it says on, like, the Jet Reddit or, like, the Reddit? Because I know you would lurk on Reddit uh, for I, Japan life. So I lurk. I, I have been active, but I mostly lurk. And um, yeah, this is all stuff on Reddit and also from my personal observations and experiences. Yeah, yeah, okay. So long story short, you did get accepted, not as a Japanese citizen. Now you went to Aomori, right, which is Northern Japan. And uh, you know, you're getting paid pretty well. I think they pay for your, your housing, right? But here, I guess a lot of people fall in this pitfall where it's just such a cushy job that they might, that's all that they might do, right? And, uh, but you were doing BJJ, or you're doing judo in Iowa, right? And then you started doing jujitsu in Japan, or can you, like, how did you go through this? So, yeah, uh, all my life I've been doing judo. I did wrestling in high school, and I started BJJ kind of in my last year of college. And then when I came to Japan for the JET program, I shifted away from judo and mostly went into BJJ. Well, what, what was it like, uh, differences in, like, the dojo life in Japan versus the U.S.? The only difference I've noticed is that sometimes with like older Japanese men, they have that like samurai spirit, that sort of kamikaze spirit where kamikaze. Oh, that one, that that spirit. So like they don't want to lose. They don't want to tap. <laughs> so like I've my my friend uh, has choked out like like three like older Japanese dudes in tournaments. Like they blacked out because they didn't want to tap. <laughs> <laughs> They'd rather die. <laughs> yeah, it's an honor. Th like, I respect it. So you're doing JET teaching, uh, like, middle school, high school. How did how was it? Uh, and it was, like, a couple years, right? Yeah, so, you know, before JET, the application, kind of, if you got a good GPA and you can, you know, show that you're diverse and um, really contribute to society by bringing something new, then you get in, right? And then during, um, you're probably going to get placed in Tohoku or Hokkaido. So basically not Tokyo, Osaka, Kyoto. Yes. So the JET program doesn't release statistics on acceptance rates. It's like most people say it's about 50%, which is kind of high. Um, but they do release statistics on like placements of JETs. And if you just look at the numbers, there are more JETs in Tohoku and Hokkaido. A lot of the privatized ALTs are in cities, but um, out in the country, it's mostly JETs. So you, Did you expect something else? Yes, I expected to be put in like um, a nice medium-sized city that had like multiple BJJ gyms and uh, I get put out in like the country and they, there wasn't even a gym in the city I lived in yes, but the guy from from a bigger city used to come down to our city twice a week to rent out a space to teach so that's where I was training for two years. Well, how, well, how did you find that? I barely found it on the internet. When I got my placement from JET the first thing I, I looked up was the city, like what kind of place is it? And I noticed it was like far from everything. And then I'm looking for a jiu-jitsu gym like desperately. And then I finally found it like, oh, oh, they do do training twice a week. And I was so relieved. So already I can see a theme here is like um, 
you know, to relate it to other people. You had to look pretty hard to find this, and it was like your beacon of hope. Your, your one safe haven. Now other people, um, I guess it kind of gives like a little bit of that insight that you really have to sometimes just reach out and try to find something you know, get like another skill. You know, Grant is doing BJJ. It doesn't have to be that. Like, literally, it could be like I don't know, playing taiko drums or like getting good at what is it? something Japanese, <laughs> kendo. Or uh, if you're not into sports, like it could be like writing or drawing or something. Uh, you were doing this, and you also ended up applying to do some tournaments, like in Japan and also uh, in Asia, right? Yeah, I fought in Korea. Um, I also went back to America once during my time on the jet program to fight. Uh, fought all over Japan. Yeah, so what Max was saying, it's absolutely true. When you get on the jet program, your job might be extremely boring. It might be great, but it's only seven hours of your day, five days a week. So if you don't really have anything else to do, it's kind of unfortunate. So, um, you know, get into the culture, get into the city, whether it's martial arts or uh, taiko or like ikebana, something, do something. Check it out. Uh, real quick, people are really curious about money. Can we talk about money and uh, what to expect? Um, I don't know if everyone gets the same pay, uh, but yeah, what do you, what money? Let's talk about it. So when I did it um, back in 2016, the remuneration was uh, approximately in US dollars. Two thousand eight hundred dollars per month for the first year, and, and that's not including. I mean, you didn't have to pay rent though. You do have to pay rent. Oh, okay. Uh, certain. So the base salary, which is like three thousand, approximately three thousand a month, that's standard wherever you live in Japan. That's from the government, the national oh, government. Right. So yeah. even even Tokyo. Even Tokyo. So if you get put in Tokyo you're gonna have less pocket change after your rents deducted and all that than someone who's living in like the country um, but still the three thousand bucks a month in Tokyo like that's enough to, to get by and have have extra spending money I bought zero furniture I just saved that money did you sleep on the floor I did sleep on the floor <laughs> yeah okay so you're making almost three thousand dollars a month seven hours a day five days a week uh, do you have and it's like not too much preparation right because there is a teacher that prepares most of the homework and you're just like support right or something like what can we expect there so my situation is probably standard from is, like was it middle school or? yeah I was um, based in a junior high school I'd have some classes during the week at the junior high school and then orbiting the junior high school in that district are a couple of elementary schools and I would kind of like satellite out to those every once in a while and the job is what you make it you can do the bare minimum and just show up and like read words off the board um, and just do that and put in zero effort or you can go the extra mile and and really like get into it and work hard to be a great teacher and the pay will stay the same you won't lose your job it like they literally expect you to do nothing so if you want to do more that's on you if you want to just do the bare minimum and like uh, watch YouTube or write your blog or be on social media or study you know you got a lot of free time in jet get some certificates or um, even go to grad school while you're on jet this doesn't just apply to jet uh, this could apply to any other program or English a Kaiwa in general because Grant is an American citizen uh, he does not have, there's a mosquito, <laughs> we're outside, it's the middle of June, but he made this happen and um, you know you do have to find somebody who can sponsor your visa obviously, but um, you know the idea was that he made moves, he made moves to get there, made it all happen and then finally you broke out of English teaching last year? So I did two years on the JET program and when I was in that fight in Korea, um, I met a guy who's got a gym in Aichi. So after I finished with the jet program, I moved to Aichi to go be at that guy's gym. And then... Um, That's a Kusano? Yeah, Leandro Kusano. I was doing a Kaiwa, which is like after school English. Uh, five hours a day from like four to maybe like nighttime, eight or nine, um, at a different location every day. It's very standard. A Kaiwa, it's like the alternative to jet. Then I came to the UFC gym where I was working mostly at a gym. This is uh, Tokyo, by the way. UFC gym in Japan, Tokyo. They just opened up. 
and you know I'm guessing that's through another contact that you got that or did you find it on online uh, an acquaintance of mine introduced me to the job K kind of key point here just to relay this back lots of judo Brazilian jiu-jitsu background meeting somebody like Kusano like this is all important to be doing something outside of you know your your jet program job to meet some people who could actually maybe possibly link you up to something else and also something important is uh, there are a lot of Japanese gyms but I was, I've been surprised like after meeting like uh, Kusano and just seeing like your Instagram there's a lot of uh, you know non Japanese people here doing stuff with martial arts and it's like the foreign community here like if you're a cool guy or cool girl or cool whatever cool circle you can identify as whatever uh, you know it it can be a good community here so you just kind of like have to make sure you're doing something and not not like a, a douche I don't know what else to say going off of that I would say don't be that person who only wants to speak Japanese who only wants to have Japanese friends like foreigners are your friends um, you live in a country where you're a minority you're gonna help out someone who's in the same situation as you like maybe a little more than someone who isn't um, all of my network basically everyone who's helped me to either get jobs or get fights or find opportunities to get sponsors and stuff these are all people I met outside the jet program none of the people I worked with on jet none of the like jet administrations or anything that they have has helped me to get a job after JET or, or any sort of opportunity after JET. So it's really what you do kind of outside the program, in my experience, that will help you like propel yourself further into whatever you want to do after the JET program actually ends. Any last words? Yeah, uh, if you're on the JET program and you're interested in like doing something that's not teaching English, you can do it. You don't have to be like um, a martial artist like me and go into fighting it could be anything else what I'd really recommend is to level up your Japanese you got to be able to speak Japanese if yeah. you're living in Japan yeah hundred yeah. percent let me just like say that like I know some people that live here and um, their Japanese is just not really that good and you know foreigners are your friends and you should hang out with them but if you do live in Japan you know speak Japanese like I don't like it when people come here and really treat Japanese people as like outside, like even though they're the, you're an outsider, like mm. treat people like Japanese people, like oh Japanese people think this way or that way, and it's like just become friends with like people, like everyone's just you know human, just uh, so yeah, improve your Japanese. Let me just reiterate that. Yeah, once you improve your Japanese, you got to get another marketable skill. So popular ones are like engineering and computer science and stuff you can get jobs pretty easily if you've got that here um, and for me it was like BJJ right I have this skill and now what I do for my my source of income is teach BJJ I guess if you have any questions or anything like that you want to hear about my story or you want to like hate on me for something I've said during this video <laughs> hate, hate um, on Grant yeah, yeah, this like, bastard he, he said anyone can get accepted 50% accept rate yeah if you if you like had to apply three times to get on the program and just want to like <laughs> destroy me on social media check out my instagram and uh, i'm opening my gym in tokyo yeah this year so that's also going to be on my social media if you guys live in the tokyo area um i'd love to have you come by and check out the gym okay great great uh, little promo there yeah. guys thanks for watching this video if you want to hear more hit grant up or you know post in the comments make sure to like and subscribe the video See you guys in the next one. All right, bye-bye.